Come on, Rangers. Come on, Rangers. We missed the whole game. We're in the end game now, again, still. Dorking Wanderers' disjointed season is reaching a climax. There are but three games left to play and the Surrey side are on a trip to the Cathedral City of St Albans, 20 miles north of London, knowing that a defeat would hand league leaders Maidstone the title. So it's of some concern to Mark White and the Dorking team that St Albans themselves are still fighting. They're four points away from the playoffs and anything but a win today would end their season. The sun is beating down upon one of the most attractive stadiums we've yet visited and while we at Bunch of Amateurs are feeling the tension, there's one man who refuses to go gentle into that good late afternoon. I think one of the things you learn in football is that if you can still be playing for something all season, I don't think there's ever been a season we're not playing for something, so I don't, you know, like the idea of 10 games to go and it's just a set of friendlies. So we're playing for something. We're playing really well. There's real relaxed spirit. We've got a lot of positives around the camp. Barry being the latest one, he's back from a serious um, concern of his. And so, yeah, we're in a really good place. Nice venue, nice people. What's not to like? Yeah, this is a nice place to spend an afternoon, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, lovely. It's a nice pitch, trees around the edge always make... Yeah, just feel, I feel like we should have like a rug and some sort of um, ham and cheese sandwiches <laughs> and Prosecco. And on, on the subject of the opposition, what are you expecting from them um, tactics-wise today? Well, they're out of form. I think, I think they're going to have to sort of play more so on... Um, more so on sort of will to win than anything else, really. I think we'll play this pitch quite well, the way we play. They've got um, a great striker um, who's been in good form this season. I think they're going to try and stop us playing. They probably worked that out of press our back three. It's just how long they sort of, you know, keep up that will really. Um, teams sometimes start off intending to press it and then give up the ghost. When you're winning, you just tend to just sit tight with, uh, with what you've got. Jason and Alfie playing together, McShane back in midfield. That sort of three boxes tick for how we play. And even if you know, you're missing Barry Fuller, Matt Briggs on the right. You've still got a key area of the field that um, you know you're going to have some moments. So can you keep a clean sheet and then win the game, taking the opportunity that you know you're going to get? My absolute aim today, our aim today, should be to take this league to Monday. That's the key, OK? That's the only thing I say about the opposition today. Their game on Monday is a huge banana skin as it is. And if they need to win it to win the league and we take it down to that last that Meadowbank, right, that's when the magic could happen. So the most important thing, if we take this division to this Monday and today we just take care of business and win the game. That's the most important thing, OK? Um, right, so there'll be um, probably like a four, I don't know, like a maybe a 4-2-3-1. Um, last week they played 4-4-2. Yeah, no matter how they play, the dangers will be the same. So Banton, who last week played left wing in a 4-4-2. OK, 4-4-2. Very dangerous player, so um, we need to take care of him. Jeffers has scored a lot of goals. His goals are shots outside the box, or great movement in the box. He's not a player you can take your eye off at all. He's a ghost centre forward. And he does it like at ease. You don't really think he's working hard and then he's there. So we stop him getting shots off and in the box we, we've got one hand and one eye on him the whole time. My goal is, is for our little, our little story. Our little story this year is what we've done. And it's about making sure we take it to the last possible minute and make them have to win it. Does that make sense? That's what it's about. But what I would say is, you know, we need to be ready because at any point today, if I'm one of the subs, it could be we're one up, the oppo ain't, and we're having to think, those subs are having to go on and 
get us over the line and really think about the match and what's what. So let's just be really switched on to any eventuality. Right, in terms of us, I'll give you one big thing, which is discipline. I don't think they are an Aggie team remotely. Not one bit. Um, discipline's important because you just don't want like that early yellow. I know it's innocuous, eyes. But, um, and yours was as well, yours weren't a yellow, but it's just that it fucking, it's obviously not ideal for us, okay? However, we're in a battle, and we have to put a foot in, we have to put a foot in, and we'll take what comes with that. Just be really, make sure it's nothing, what's that word, Sammy? What you always say? Forced? Yeah, nothing, nothing un unforced. Nothing we don't need to do, does that make sense? Yeah, be smart, okay? So keep your discipline. So let's just be really professional, make sure the warm up's great. Yeah, take the great week training into this game and the great form that we're in. Just remember that bit. Don't let any fine margins go against us and then we'll get what we deserve. OK, come on, boys. My name is Crokey because I run the karaoke for 14 years. We're uh, St Albans supporters, as you can see. All the all the mob. We uh, we work for the for the St Albans, digging the pitch up and doing general volunteer work. So um, yeah, my boys on the media service, and uh, we're enjoying a nice sunny day. I've only got a t-shirt on. My dad's been working here since like before, or before I was born actually, and sort of he brought me along when I was young. It's ever since then. Yeah, gone to every game, got shirts, yeah, met the players, it's been, it's been really good. It's been quite a difficult season, uh, quite a long season really. The, uh, they got the boys done well in the, the FA Cup, so back in November was when I was first on board, just helping out. So um, in terms of the ground, I think it lacked, if I'm honest, it lacked a bit of TLC. Uh, the guys previously, with the greatest respect to them, they, they travelled a long distance, so spending the, the sort of time and effort on the grounds you know, it was difficult for them, so. But you have a look around here, there's all the everyday people here, all working all week, and they come up here, have a beer, enjoy themselves. You know, it's really good. We've got a nice can scene here, we've uh, turned it around a bit. Our season's gone a bit flat since we beat Forest Green, but you have to take it as it comes. Well, it's, it's just, it's so much better than Premier League in terms of like, you know everyone around the club, and like so everyone knows you it's good to have a chat with the players chat with the managers during the after the game yeah it's, it's yeah mo most it's most of the stuff you can't do in premier league you can do in non-league i remember coming here as a young kid i mean going back into the 80s you know my, my dad brought me here so uh, you know going back then it's very much about again i'll, I'll keep on about the community things but it, it was you know it's it's about the kids that they come, this you'll see today. There's a lot, a lot of youngsters coming in rooting for the thing. So in terms of me personally, yeah, I'm very proud to be from St Albans City and rooting. A win would be nice, but these people are second, Dorking, and Mason is the top. They want us to win because that means that they'll go through as as uh, straight through as opposed to playoffs. But we just want to have a draw or a win would be very nice. I I, I reckon I reckon City. I, I mean I, I wouldn't say the underdogs, but pushing for a playoff place. I reckon it might be 2-1 to City. Yeah. Ooh, you've got a bit of confidence against an important team as well. Yeah, yeah. It's a great, you'll see a great atmosphere here today. We've got great fans. Um, the support is good and they come out on a nice day like this. So it's, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty good actually. Well, like anyone, we, 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 we would like the club to progress um, up through the leagues. Um, and, and yeah, we, that is the ambition of the football club. I mean, obviously, getting out of a league or staying in a league is, is very difficult, um, but we're ambitious. Um, we want to be playing at the next step, um, as do Dorking. This 100-year-old ground is the biggest challenge, um, because although, it's, as you said, it's a lovely pitch, um, it's a lovely environment, great fans, but that's the extent of it. We don't have the sustainability that a football club needs to have nowadays. So that's one of our challenges. How are you going to deal with it? Well, we're working on a plan. We're working on a plan. It's going to be a very, very tough game today. I mean, we, we, we need the three points, but, um, and you need the three points. So it's going to be a really, really tough game for us today. 
We're under no illusions. It's, it's going to be easy. Uh, it's, it is going to be tough. Real short, real sharp. Yeah. Balls in the box for Jace, or, or if you get inside, run it in the net, son. Fucking come on, Jim. Let's get. Let's take this into Monday, mate. That would be a fucking big crowd Monday. Let's take it into Monday. Come on. All good, Jace. Yeah. yeah. Got to make sure the units like. If you turn round and see the distance is too great, it's a big pitch. So what, eyes. See how big the pitch is. We'd, when we go forward, we've got to go forward with it. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? Great talk, Bobby, love that. Come on, let's get it moving. Go work the press, counter press. I don't want any issues with urgency. Right? There's a difference between there's a difference between like being composed and being relaxed. We can't be relaxed. We'll be professional. Okay. We'll give each other great information. We'll be diligent off the ball, we'll pick up. The biggest and most important thing is close the gaps on the pitch. Whatever you do, close the gaps on the pitch. It's a big pitch. You've got to support each other. A team like us can keep the ball on there, can keep it the whole time. It should be like a swarm of fucking flies going across this pitch. You'll be able, at times today, you'll be able to pick your passes, boys. Pick your passes, okay? DJ's job is to make sure we're compact, right? Dan, that's also your job. You and DJ need to make sure we're compact. So if we're going down one wing, the rest of it is tucked around at all times. But apart from that, it's business as usual for us boys. What an outfit we are, it's business as, you, as, as usual. We just do what we do. Keep it on structure, keep it on point. We deserve to take this league to Monday. We deserve to take it to Monday, at the very least, okay? So we'll take care of our business boys, okay? Come on. St Albans are wearing a rather dashing yellow and blue number this week, produced by the iconic Hummel brand. A particular favourite here at BOA Towers. And if you think we have good tasting kits, then you'll be pleased to know we are sincerely recommending fcfootballkit.com for any non-league team who are thinking about splashing out on a new outfit for next season. The Dorking bench quickly figure out what system they're up against. However, there are bigger problems afoot, such as the plague of locusts that Barry Glendenning may have sworn upon us. 4-3-3, three, three. 1-2, three. here's your 3, here's your 3 in midfield. Yeah. Well, you got card, 4-3-3. Three, three. Yeah, let's have a look though. 28, they look like they're playing a the 3 and narrow. 4-2-3-1 it's going to be. It's here, let's have a look. Was... Yeah, it'll be 4-2-3-1 I think, Carl. Right. Double check it though. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever system they're playing, St Albans clearly haven't figured out how to deal with Jimmy Mewitt, who immediately causes them problems down the Dorking right. It's an early scare for the home side, as Rutherford's header is saved by Michael Johnson. Most of us on the sideline are wondering if Michael Kane will ever turn up to deal with the swarm, but the linesman? He's mostly concerned about the substitutes not wearing bibs. Should be. Bob's. Yeah. Bob's, you get a bib. The game is opening up as both sides look to counter one another. Kieran Wiltshire leads the charge for City with the movement of Jeffers and Neil a cause for Dorking concern. Make a stick out. Good Alfie. Go on, Jace. Run on! Poor house. See how far away we are there to support him. That'd be the problem today. See the gaps, see the gaps. Mark is seeing gaps all over the pitch and he wants them plugged as if they were the bunch of amateurs Patreon page, which you can sign up for for as little as three pounds a month. Listen, we've got to tighten up in midfield. DJ, he's coming on to you. The bugs are targeting the players' eyes and dive-bombing them as if they were Randy Quaid at the end of Independence Day. That's even easier. Sean Jeffers needs an eye bath. The lino says he can't have treatment while the ball is in play, but the ball is not in play. Deliver! Deliver! Wanderers are putting the ball in the box, but they're not getting the breaks. Touch, touch. Oh, he's getting flies in the eye. What's he stopped it for? Fly again. No! No! Fuck. Is it guys watch? 
Dorking have pushed their opponents up against the wall as if they were Amber Heard or Johnny Depp, or both probably. DJ tries a reverse pass into the right channel as if that would ever work. <laughs> and when Josh Taylor wins the ball back, he leaves Alex Lancashire in a heap. And still Dorking can't get through the St Albans defences. No, wider, no, wider. Steve, Is he on. all right? Run it! Run it! DJ! Oh, you. DJ, avoid the pockets! It's out time to match Avoid the pockets! It's out here! Joshy sometimes leaving his man. He needs to get a little bit tight into him, all right? So in there, it's the four and the 15. DJ's day has been a bit hit and miss, and the visitors continue to prioritise Jimmy's flank. Switch! Switch! Substitutes Ed and Sammy, meanwhile, have found arguably the worst place to warm up. It would seem the pressure of working next to the Dorking bench has gotten to the lino on this side. Don't worry, don't worry. Numbers. Release, Mac release, no, release, no, release, no. release. No. Fucking worrying about fucking Lilo! Stop fucking worrying about them! <laughs> what a move that is. Cut inside! Cut inside! Over and over, Dorking attacked the city left side, but this time a tug on Jimmy's shirt and an off the ball trip on Alfie is enough for City to survive. And Dan Lincoln has a fly in the eye. The St Albans bench are arguing that Lincoln will have to leave the field of play despite being the goalkeeper. Play football for 40 years and you want to keep the goal. <laughs> Perhaps it's the sun or the frustration of a goalless match. Either way, tempers are beginning to fray. Leave it, Josh, he'll give it to you, he'll give it to you, Josh. He'll give it to you. There is something really funny about footballers fighting over a ball. Moments before the end of the half, Cheadle's left wand drops a free kick into the mixer and St Albans struggle to get it out of there. Jimmy Mewitt turns the ball inside the far post but is given offside which is odd because the ball seemed to come off the toe of Callum Adebayi. Jimmy higher! Nothing is it? Bit of subs in. Deidre coming off mate, I can't say I'm swapping it for more. I think you've had, a, you've had better ass mate, you know that but that's how it works. Right, all, all okay. Dan, I think you've been our best player because you've been really decisive in how we're going to play. So there's two aspects here. So when you're used to winning games 3-4-0, if you don't get a goal or two, sometimes you start to get the hump. This is about the fine margins. I don't want to pass back to Dan unless we absolutely have to. Jimmy, when Isaac gets the ball, your job is to stretch the bloke for the team. You've got to stretch the bloke. OK, you're bringing him in, Jimmy. And because you're bringing him in, it's not an easy pitch. So all of a sudden, he's got a harder ball and you've got a harder touch. It's ridiculous. No. Um, he's in there. He's in there. He's, 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 he's struggling. Oh, well, I need to know then, don't I? He's working on now. Is he struggling? He says he's all right. Well, what's wrong, what's wrong with him? Neck, neck and quad. He's struggling last night. So this is what I need to do. I need this game to become man for man off the ball, right? It's really, really important. Second thing is, don't force the passes every time down the throat. I know it's there at times. I think Alfie round the corner's on. But for me, this is the game where we've just got to not blink, boys. Just relax. I know we said, I know we said pass forward or into the 10. You can just give it to the left or right side and they can just push it into the winger or to a third man run. The game is that easy. It's really easy. What you need is the movement. So whether it's Nar, Bob, whoever, 
to be high, the movement to be good is what we need. We'll look at this one in just a second. How bad is that neck now? It's all right, it's just very stiff. Okay. So, here's the thing for me, right, okay? In terms of Jimmy, what we've got to do here, we've got to make sure we get this on pattern. The opposition uh, makes done a one up. That's not an issue, because that could end up being one all, two one, and we could be end up two nil. And, and then we've had that day we didn't think would come. I'm quite pleased it's only one nil down their place at half time. I'm quite pleased with that. That to me says it's a close game. And if we get a goal, which we will, it's going to be fucking nervous pills. I, I think our pattern can be so much better. Our shape. You two just go high, play high. You two engage, press when we need to. At the back, they're allowing you to play the one to the left or right back. All right, boys? So can we get our shape? And can we just remember, we can't win every game 5 nil. We're nil-nil, away from home, National League South. We've done lots of great things. And now, you lot have got to lead each other to victory. Lead each other to victory. Get your shape back and go play around the outside and play in the right areas, OK? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. How is it? Is it restrictive? Yeah. Bobby. No, you're coming off. Bobby, listen. They want balls in the box. Early crosses. Yeah, if you get one on one, take the bloke on. Cheadle and you need to be talking all the time defensively. Okay, come on. Forward. The Dorking players know what's at stake and their opening to the half shows it. They intend to find the goal that keeps the season alive. Cut. Run him! Run him! Damn, well done. Damn, well done. Not the pocket! Jimmy, you don't want it in the pocket! The potential foul not given for Pryor proceeds to lapse in concentration and Sean Jeffers is in. That's a fucking You ain't gonna give it, Jace. Lino, mate. Oh, more. Lino. It's a foul, mate. Because you're not watching, Lion. The introduction of Bobby Joe on the left seems to have given Dorking a new threat and he combines with Cheadle to give Alfie Rutherford his best chance. That. Oh, Alfie, mate. Oh. Well done, Moore, I love that! Isaac, well done! We've got a time, haven't we? Josh! Josh! Great start! The magic of McShane then gives Alfie another oh. opening. Hugh Dawson does just enough to put the Dorking top scorer off and St Albans look to respond. Jimmy, Jimmy, you ball watching? Put in, boys. Sean Jeffers and Callum Adebayi combine to give Jeffers a golden chance, but he sidefoots over the bar and Dorking's season remains on the precipice. Now run him, now run him forward, go on. Jimmy Mewitz has been Dorking's brightest attacking threat and he's about to give Jason Pryor the kind of chance that Pryor never misses. Oh, oh Jason! Fucking hell. Oh, no. That's, that's a big fucking... Yeah, that's sure it, eyes! Done! Jimmy loves Jeff that! Done! In this next sequence, you can see why it's so hard to be an official at a football match. Dan Gallagher and Mitchell Weiss have an awkward on-the-floor clash, while Alex Lankshear does everything he can to cheat Dorking out of a throw-in. It sums footballers up that they'll be honest with each other while deceiving the referee, and then complaining when the referee gets it wrong. There really is no honour in football. Fucking oh, hell, Lino! Lino, no way. So fucking bad. Lino, no way. So bad. Why aren't they complaining at Lancashire for pretending that it was his throw-in? Come on, lads! Ref! Ref! Ref, mate! He, he went the other way, man! He's, he's in line and you're over there, ref! He's the linesman, you're the ref!
And if I've got that wrong... Ask him now and swap it. Are you going to let me talk? Yes. Need to yell you yes. If I've got that wrong, I've got it wrong, all right? You can understand why I'm a little bit frustrated with the guy on the floor, all right? So I'm, I'm a, can you ask him now then, please? Yeah, all right. Thank and you. And if I've got it wrong, I've got it wrong. Thank you. you can you ask him now then? You can't talk to me You can change it. I get that. You can change that. The break in play has put Dorking off their game and St Albans look to capitalise. No, fuck off. A shot hits Taylor's arm from point blank range and City have a free kick in dangerous territory. Come on to the end, come on. Jeffers tries to sneak it inside Dan's covered post and is bemused by the goalkeeper's save. But the danger is still there as St Albans continue to look for a goal that would sustain their own season. Here. Dan Lincoln does well to deflect the first effort, but Zane Banton turns the ball back into Jeffers' path and the striker crashes the ball in off the bar. Oh, Maka, Mauro, come on, come on, Maka, come on! St Albans are going to drop deep for the last 20, knowing they're pretty good at repelling the dorking attack. Oh, gotta be! What the fuck's happened there? Time has ticked away, and no matter how many crosses Dorking throw into the box, they can't find a way past the dominant goalkeeper. Best deliver we can. What they really need is for the ball to fall to the feet of Jason Pryor. Second, don't we? Uh, yeah, they come we run us up. Yeah. Look. Well, just on goal difference. Yeah, yeah, we run goal us up. So yeah, That's Andy. No, it just means our strategy now can be succinct as opposed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I want no movement, so I need everyone just to hurry up, yeah? Let's sum up that game really quickly, and then let's just sum up kind of where, where the season is now, and then just talk about the next chapter. You know, what you've got to remember is it might be an important game, but it is just another game. And it's one of them games today where, a bit like one of them dreams where something's falling on you but you can't get out of the way. It just didn't seem like it was going to happen. Balls in the box we've got on the end of things and almost clipping ear holes. And when you look back at that game, stay with me, lads. Bob, I know your attention span is not ideal, but just stay with me, mate. When you look back at that game, that I'm talking about that game, there we have had you know, an extreme amount of last third action. Delivery weren't amazing. You know, end product wasn't amazing when we did get it there. And I thought their keeper was their best player in fairness. The way he was so demanding of the box. I thought he'd done well to keeper. But that's, it's just another game. And on a big pitch that ain't ideal, a summer pitch, it's harder to, for the opportunities maybe to fall. So that was today. And the type of game that, if you played it 10 times, you'd probably win that one, you know, seven probably. And you might draw a couple. It's that type of venue. In terms of where we are now, well, you lot have, have done phenomenal. You've done phenomenal. That's how it is. Well, credit Maidstone because they've done what winners do. They've just won all their games. You don't have to necessarily be the best team in the league to win it. You've just got to win your matches more than the others. And they've done that this year, Maidstone. But we have been phenomenal. Phenomenal on another level, to fucking do what we've done. We, you know, we don't just win, 
you, you all committed to the club. You work hard. You give a shit. If you're on the bench, you don't moan. You know, you give a shit about your teammates that play. The people that ain't named want to be here. You know, we entertain everywhere we go. We scored 20 goals in fucking four games. You know, we scored 97 fucking league goals. We are for, you are a phenomenal outfit. Phenomenal, right? So to do what we've done this year with people playing out of position, injuries all over the shop, challenges galore, brilliant management team credit, big time, and you lot massive credit, okay? At the start of the season, they kept saying, well, what's the goals? And I said, I said, the, I said the exact statement. I said, home playoff is the goal because to win a league, you just have to get that little bit of luck. And I always say that. I always say that. You're just going to need to get that little bit of luck. We never had that this season. We never had it. We had a lot of problems, a lot of issues. We didn't quite get the luck this year that we needed as a squad. You have overachieved, and it's a phenomenal that you're the team everybody wants to be, and you finish runners-up in a division with an absolute so out of luck this year. So that's section two. I was over the moon, very proud of everybody, right? Section three is... Get the champagne out of Medibank, boys, because I've been there. I've been there. I've had playoff wins, and there ain't no feeling like a playoff win, I'll tell you now. There's nothing like it. Two and a half thousand home fans, 600 away, semi-final at Argaff, final at Argaff, at home, on a 3G. So what we've got to do now, and the management team will do this if they're brilliant, I know you'll do it. To a man, we've got to get the right recovery right, We've got to make sure we're picking the right players in the right situations. We can't afford to tone people down too far. We can't afford to overstretch them. We've got to make sure everybody's playing so they're ready. We've got two games to do that because we're runners up, so that's brilliant. And now it is about making a bit of history for our club and we're in pole position. Ain't no one wants to play Dorking Wanderers at our place. It's section three, it's reset. It is, you know, if anything, go again. Like, can you think about your recovery more? Can you train a little bit harder? Can we get the shape even better? Mental ability is everything in winning. You know, them, Olymp them Olympic champions that knocked the bar down twice and they got one go left. And they fucking crowd are watching them and they know how to get over it. They know what to do. That's now us. We're not just going in there under any pressure. We're going in there physically in the best shape of any team in the playoffs. And let me tell you, winning them playoffs ain't no feeling. I remember the one thing I said to Slav when he was necking a fucking 18 litre bottle of vodka at the only nightclub he's ever been to in England. Right, yeah. And I remember saying to Slav, like, fucking, and, and my, my people was like, mate, like, if you could choose to win it, you'd do it like this. If you knew you was gonna win it, you'd do it like that, because that is a phenomenal feeling. All right, boys. But we've got, you know, that's the end goal. Now I've got to work hard, all of you. Right, don't let it go now. We've worked so hard to get that home runners up slot. That's a big deal in the playoffs at Medibank in front of all of our crowd on a 3G pitch. Okay, boys, a big deal. Okay, give yourselves a round of applause, boys. Well done. Well done. Fantastic. Right, get the gear in. That felt like a real experienced leadership talk in there. Was that, had you planned that? Uh, not planned it, but, you know, leadership obviously is important. We've been in different scenarios over the years, so, yeah, experience is the perfect word. When push comes to shove, you have to always critique things honestly. And, you know, today was on the field one of those days. The ball bobbled over our foot, not on our foot, and we, we, we came up short across the season. I, I thought it was the opposite. I thought we overachieved... When you look at where we were, 12th or 13th, and no players available, when you get to the end of it all, you have to critique it for what it is. You have to. We over, overachieved. We're going to finish runners-up, uh, barring an 18-goal swing in two games, which I can't see happening. And um, that's going to bring the biggest game ever seen to Dorking, ever. Uh naturally disappointed i think that would be for anyone just because i think everybody in the dressing would have had a little bit of hope obviously like you know you, you can never not believe that you might achieve something um so naturally disappointed but at the same time like the gaffer said at half time it's, you know it is a fantastic achievement 
you know, to finish like where we are, I think now, you know, saying maybe guaranteed a second place on, on goal difference. How did you approach playing them today? Did you do anything different? Did you allow for anything? Not really, no. We just we, we just know that, you know, they're, they're a very good side. They, they, they want to be on the front foot a lot. Um, it was about us trying to be patient, not lose too many holes. If we left too many holes, they were going to hurt us. And as we got a bit tired late on, they got some big chances. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been fortunate to hold on in that last 10 minutes. But I felt into the first sort of 75 minutes, we probably had the best three or four chances in the game. You go into these ties now and just think you've got to pick yourself up again. And, you know, you've got to go into the playoffs and forget about what's happened now. Um, you know, it's just not meant to be, I think. Um, you know, made so at the end of the day, deserve to win it. You know, um, so credit to them for uh, just keep winning and winning. And obviously, you know, some of the some of the games that we played, obviously, um, you know, we could be delivering five, six, seven goals at, at the top. You know, some of the performances have been fantastic, but we just fell short. So, you know, that's bottom line. But yes, we've got to pick ourselves up now, and um, we still got two league games to go. So prepare ourselves, um, make sure that we can be ready for the playoffs. This is the first time we've completed a season in this division. Like hmm. we were we were league champions of the Bostick League until about two weeks ago. Um, we won that by 20 points. We finished, just, you know, you've got to look at the fact, we finished seventh, uh, got, we got to the semi-final of the Plus um, in an incomplete season the first year of COVID. We are winning it by five points game in hand when it got called off second year of COVID. We've had a torrid season, managed to finish runners up and get a home playoff game. So you kind of feel like, you know what? We're in the mix here. We're doing what Wanderers do. We're, we're making people smile. We're bringing happiness. We're good at what we do. I think the realistic goal was to get in the playoffs. Um, and at the moment, we're falling short on that. But I don't think anyone planned for us to get into the second round of the FA Cup, which is probably taking its toll in terms of planning, preparation. And the second half of the season has been tough in terms of having to catch up eight games. Um, and that happened on most Tuesdays between the, the end of... Uh, January and the end of March and it seems to have taken its toll over the last couple of weeks we've not played so many midweek games and uh, we seem to have got a bit of our energy back and some of the legs back into the players that were missing for the last few weeks but you've still got a chance of getting in the playoffs right we have I mean it's obviously in heaven's hand but they've got to play Chippenham next week if we can win on Monday and they don't pick up maximum points at Hemel you know there's it, a chance it might happen so you know we've just got to keep believing that we can do it um, and, and, and go to to Oxford on Monday and hopefully pick up all three points. I was in this division coming out of full-time football and uh, yeah, we, we, uh, we actually won it at Ebbsfleet because um, we didn't finish the highest. So we, we played there at the final and uh, yeah, we won on penalties to be fair after extra time. And that was, like I say, that feeling then on that day, obviously, you know, that stayed with me for as long as, you know, my my football career, was, it, I must admit, it was one of the good days uh, that I've had to be fair. Um, there's no better feeling. So yeah, so I have done it. Uh, now this is the second time, obviously, if we can get that far, that I'll be involved. So, um, yeah, hopefully it'll be successful. Can we get those moments that playoffs can give you? Because they're massive, them moments. I've been there. Ain't no other way, you know, um, no better way of winning than to do it in the playoffs. You excited about it? Really excited because Medibank's going to be rammed. It's at our place. It's on a 3G. There won't be any bobbles there. Pitch at a good size. It suits us. We we'll have, you know, three quarters home fans. And listen, we know the score of playoff games. Um, it's, a, it's a tense affair. It, it can go either way. But we've reached our objective, uh, Rich. And if we get, if we get, Rich, if we get, win our semi and, and get a playoff final at Medibank, we're going to give it everything we've got, you know. What a phenomenal achievement that would be. So we're on phase three now, Rich, and we're looking forward to getting the balance right with who we play and who we don't, and then seeing how we get on in the playoffs. Thanks for watching Bunch of Amateurs. We can now confirm there are three episodes to go in this season, and every single one of them is going to blow your mind. So to help us show them to more people, hit like, leave a comment, and make sure you subscribe. This week's comment of the week comes from Von Krusty, who says, Holy shit, I followed Jarl on TikTok for so long and just now found your YouTube. I'm going to be binge watching all the episodes now. Honestly, you thought we just did that for TikTok. Imagine the effort.